Trust that the Lord is helping you. Yes, Lord. And we are almost finished. And we thank God that we have heard the call to dedicate the first month, the first couple of weeks to God. Amen. Amen. And so at this moment, our topic today is divine health. Divine health. This is something that every one of us should desire. Yesterday I was speaking to Apostle and we were saying that we hope that the people of God don't think that the same prayers are being offered every single fast. Because the way God has made it, you need to pray for help. You need to pray for favor. You need to pray for these things continually under different auspices. And this one is under the auspice and the guise of the beginning of the year. And so I want us not to get casual with these prayers. I want you to be very and highly spiritual. That you don't just come and just say whatever it is and leave. But you are praying and you are enforcing that this year, God, as you give me influence over nations, as you allow me to sit with kings, May my health not be an issue. Yes, May Lord. my health not hinder me. Yes, as you open doors for me, as you give me marriage, may my health not hinder me. Yes, Lord. As you give me a new job, may my health not hinder me. Yes, Lord. As I am pushing the kingdom forward, as I am opting myself to be in service, Every single day of this year for your kingdom. May my health not be hindered. Yes, Lord. See, when you are praying, you must always direct your mind to what you are praying. Try not to pray amiss. Because that is one downfall of the believer. That we take things so lightly and so casually. That if we're not careful, it becomes a religious and mundane act. <clears throat> but today we thank God for always opening our eyes. Yes, Amen. Lord, Lord. Amen. Jeremiah 33, 6. And it says, Behold, I will bring it to health and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and what? Truth. This is the dimension of Jehovah Rapha. See, when we are not careful, we limit God by saying Jehovah Rapha is only healing. He said, I will bring them health and healing. And so the dimension that we think is only healing is really health and healing. So God is not only able to heal you, but he is able to keep you out of sickness. He is able to give you a 10 out of 10 report every year. Yes, Lord. Where you can go to the hospital only for a checkup. 
It is possible. Jehovah Rapha is the dimension of God that provides health and healing to his people. He said, I will bring it to health and to healing. And so I want you to restructure your mind that when you see prayers of healing and health, you don't think that it's not about you because you are not sick. He said he can bring you to a place where you are divinely whole. He can bring you to a place where you don't have to stop doing God's work. When have you ever seen Apostle and I sick? Tell me. And I say that to the glory of God because we've tapped into a, a, a level of rhema that so long as we are on this pulpit, so long as we are doing the work of God, yes, we are human, we will get tired. But as for certain things, it cannot hit us. I told God, so long as I hold this mic in my pregnancies, I'm not allowed to even hear high blood pressure or diabetes. I'm not allowed to hear it. I'm not allowed to have swollen feet where I cannot stand. I'm not allowed to have certain things because I am in his service. And so don't bring me to a place where I even have to pray and come and testify that you healed me. But let me stand in the place of healing. With pregnancy comes its woes. And my biggest testimony, I told God that if you can carry me out of six, I won't stop testifying. If you knew the complications that came with pregnancy, that came with childbirth, that came with even seeing your child for the first six months, making sure that their, their face is not smuggled by some sheet because you are so tired, you would understand why we testify so hard. God is able to keep you healthy. To keep you healthy. Remember when I was younger, they said that I had a hernia, a normal hernia, which is not so normal. And I went on the operating room. My mom is my witness. I'm sure she's watching. We went to the hospital. That morning, they checked me and they said that the hole has closed up. Just so I can harry, carry the testimony that a knife has not touched my body. God is able to not only heal you, but he's able to keep you in health. Psalm 83, 18. In the King James Version, Psalm 83, 18. That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, the most, art the most high over all the earth. It is important for you to understand that God is God all by himself. He's Jehovah. And so many people throughout the scriptures knew him as Jehovah, the most high God. But not everyone had the understanding of his totality because he reveals himself to us in different dimensions. This is why it's important that each day you don't take any fasting or prayer that you're doing the same because he reveals himself in different dimensions. Here, he was revealing himself as Jehovah, the most high God. He said that men should know me as Jehovah. Every religion has a God. We all know that different religions, they call their God, God. But he said that your God should be known as Jehovah, the most high God. There's dimensions of God that he will reveal himself. Some of us, we will need him as the judge this year. Some of us, we will need him as Jehovah Rapha this year. Some of us, we will need him as Jehovah Shema this year. You will need him as different dimensions. He, his totality is too big to grasp. 
And so he revealed himself to Hagar. He revealed her as El Roy, the one who sees me. And so those of you who are in situations where you felt un you feel unseen, you must pray that dimension of God. El Roy, I need you. Today we tug on the God that is known as Jehovah Rapha. Yes, Lord. Jehovah means the one whose existence depends on himself. Jesus. My God. The one I depend on him, but he depends on himself. What a level, what a level of revelation. The one who depends on himself. Jehovah does not need you to exist, but you need Jehovah to exist. Another title that we know him by is I am that I am. He is the all in all. He is the supreme being. There is no one beside him, in front of him, or behind him. He stands alone. He stands all by himself. Jehovah is mighty and powerful. And so, because he is such a total God, he has to make sure that humanity experiences him in different dimensions. This year, you must experience him in all various dimensions. Amen. In different seasons, he must be Jehovah Jireh for you. In different seasons, he must be Jehovah Rapha for you. In, in different seasons, he must be Jehovah Shema for you. Yes, Lord. In different seasons, he must be Jehovah Nisi for yes, you. Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't take the names of God lightly. Yes, Lord. It's a revelation on its own. I believe Apostle has a preaching about this. In Exodus chapter 6, he says to Abraham that I am Elohim. That I am Elohim. And so Abraham actually did not know him as any other thing besides Elohim for a while. Because it is hard to grasp who God is. Every single day you can read the same scripture for one whole year. And every single day God will reveal himself as something different for you. And so here... When we go back to Jeremiah 33, 6, we see that he reveals himself as Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals and the one who is able to keep you in health. And so today we're praying that, Lord, as kingdom is on my mind, notice that the Queen of England, we never really heard that she was sick. She surpassed the limit age for the Europeans, not just for the people of London, but for the continent of Europe. They have stated that 65 years is the norm. But when you walk in kingdom, when you walk in queendom, when you carry a level of wealth, inheritance, and understanding, you don't live the life everyone lives. The lady had uh, doctors following after her 24-7. She had, during COVID, there was literally seven doctors to 11 doctors around her at all times. Now, when you translate that into the realms of the spirit, Jehovah Rapha and his angels should always be encamped around me at all times. Yes, I am a queen of the kingdom. I am a king of this kingdom. Yes, I walk in divine health. Yes, Even when I cough, there should be an angel there with a tablet of health. Jesus. That is the level we're walking in. Because you must understand, you can sit for a second, you must understand that sickness, there is no sick person that is happy. There is no sick person that is happy. In your sickness, you can try your best to be happy, but you yourself will see that it cannot go to the level that you want to. And so when we're praying for divine health, you are also praying that your joy remains. You are praying that your joy is constant. Some of you, it's not that you don't want to smile with people. You genuinely have body aches. 
you genuinely are feeling pain. It's not that you don't want to help, you don't want to serve, it's that you don't have the capacity. Your, your strength is weak. Today, the Lord must restore you. Yes, Lord. He must restore you. Sickness is a tormentor. Mark 9, 17. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. Continue. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. Mercy on them. But you see, what he just described was torment. Imagine you are just there. And you begin to seize for no reason. You want to stop your teeth from gnashing into your tongue. And you cannot do it. What sickness does is it torments you. It doesn't how, matter how much a person wants to be sane. When they are sick, sometimes it torments you to think that the better option is death. I used to work in hospice for over eight years. And people used to be in such pain that they would ask, can you just kill me? Can you give me the wrong medication? That is the level of torment that some go through because of sickness. And so why wouldn't I pray that let me just stay healthy? I don't want to experience none of that. Sickness is a devourer. Mark 5 25 to 26. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. She had spent all that she had you see, when you are sick, you have no choice but to spend money to try to get better. She went to all types of physicians. She flew to different spaces and places. She thought that some way, somehow, the medicine at least should do something. But all medication does sometimes is it lessens the pain. It lessens the pain. And so sickness can devour your wealth. No matter how much you have saved up, when you are sick, your money dwindles because you can't move to work. You can't produce any more money. You are bound by this sickness. It comes and it devours everything you have. And so we would be remiss not to constantly pray and enforce Jeremiah 33, 6 over our lives. That Lord, you promised that you can heal me, but you also promised to keep me in divine health. Sickness also devours peace. It devours peace. You will never be peaceful when there is an ache in your body. Some people are not bitter because they want to be bitter. Some people are not mean because they want to be mean. Sickness has made them this way. I once knew a judge, they said he was righteous. He was one of the head uh, judges in Buffalo. Everyone liked him, children liked him. The minute he was plagued with cancer, he became so wretched. He used to stand about six, seven. That's how tall he was. Now to see the man, his legs could not even straighten up. His legs were now crippled. And when you walk into the hospital room, he would say, get out, I don't want food. He would starve himself. He became so bitter. And so we must understand that sickness is also the messenger of death. John 1, 14. 
And the word became flesh and dealt and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten son. No, this is wrong. Try 14.1. Let your heart not be troubled. This isn't it either. But nonetheless, the first sickness is a messenger of death. Um, this was when Jesus was talking to, about Lazarus. And he said that this shall not end in death. Because every death, every death, every sickness ends in death. John eleven fourteen. 14. When Jesus heard that, he, he said this, that this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So Jesus, you see, Jesus, when you study him, because he's the pattern man, you learn how to speak, and you learn things behind the spirit. When he said that this sickness shall not end to death, that means that all sicknesses were ending in death. And so he had to declare it to stop that spirit of death from coming. It cannot end in death. And so you might ask, what exactly would cause me to not live in this divine health that you're speaking about? The first cause of sickness is sin, John 5, 14. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made whole, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. If you understand English, he was telling him that the only reason why this sickness came upon you was because you were sinning. And so sometimes we think that when we come to fight night, 100% of the people have to be healed. I came to tell you that sometimes that is not the case. Unless you renounce and you repent, unless you confess, the enemy will be able to torment you. See, the Catholics have an understanding of confession. They just do it not the way that we were taught in the Bible. But they have an understanding that you must confess. I was telling somebody that the other, the other day, and she began to confess, and she said, First Lady, I've been talking about you in a very nasty, negative way. You don't know. You've treated me nothing but good. But as a result, my body has been afflicted. I cannot sleep. And the Lord told me, lest I confess. She confessed, and she's free. It's not me. I can never attribute anyone's sickness to any anointing on my life. It is scriptural. You sin, you get sick. You stay sick. And so that is why we're always telling you, confess your sins. My spiritual father used to tell me that when you're doing opening prayers, when it comes to uh, forgiveness of sins, don't speak in tongues. Confess the sin. Confess it. Open your mouth and confess it. That, Lord, I've entered places that I shouldn't have entered. I've said things. I've touched things. I've done some things. My heart is not pure. Confess the sin. So the first cause of sickness is sin. The second is bitterness in your heart. Bitterness in your heart causes sickness to afflict you when you carry bitterness it is unto death when you are a person that is easily highly offended by every single thing that is a door for bitterness to to, to enter yesterday I was telling another person I said that she said you talk about offense a lot I said because the Lord delivered me from that otherwise you would not see the person that you see today if you are easily offended by every single thing, you will always be sick. Bitterness in your heart causes and empowers evil spirits to afflict you. 
I've done research with a cancer institute before, and we found that cancer is linked to bitterness. And the healing of cancer is linked to love. I literally was there for over eight years, and I'm a researcher by trade as well too. And one thing that we did is we studied every single person who had stage three or four cancer. And these people, when you hear their stories, they said that they were mad and it turned into high blood pressure and then it entered into their cells and caused cancer. Then we spoke to people after they confessed, confession, after they confessed, then we would have them call family members. And as soon as a week, you would see the family members start trickling in. Someone who had stage four cancer, who was receiving medication, Dilaudid, to make sure their pain was, was minimized, they were now sitting up and eating. And so love cures cancer. Love cures cancer. People don't know that, but love cures cancer. I have research, and we all know data is the new oil. If you carry information, if you carry data, you carry oil, basically. And so, if you know anyone with cancer, tell them, confess, and then begin to receive love around you. Those cells will fix itself. A result of curses is another reason why people are sick. 2 Kings 5.27 Therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your what? Your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence leprous as white as snow. And so sometimes it's not you that have done something. It's your forefathers that a curse was placed over them as a result. This is why I caught this revelation. That when we come here as a minister, I must train myself a few things. That one, not everyone I touch should fall. Otherwise, I will limit my anointing to falling. I can declare and decree a thing and I know it will come to pass. I don't have to shout or scream. I don't have to touch you. The second thing that I've realized that as a minister is that I must have the understanding that not everyone can come on a prayer line and be healed. Because I must enter into their generation. When you go to the hospital, in order for them to see your deficiencies, in order for them to see your illnesses, the first line of exercise is always what? Blood work. Because they must enter into your blood. So spiritually, some of you come here and we must enter into your bloodline and see what was the reason for the curse. Who caused the curse? Who cursed you in the first place? That's why it's not in your best interest to hide stuff. Because the doctor cannot even deal with you until they test your blood. So how much more us? We must enter into your bloodline and find what happened, where it happened. Even for things like poverty. Some of you, you are working hard, you're paying the tithe, you are sowing every type of seed. But somewhere, somewhere, somebody got cursed. That you shall be like a snake on your belly and nothing you have will ever be fruitful. I'm teaching you things so you know how to deal with things. The hospital even attacks the blood. I was listening to a story on Facebook. A virgin had HIV. How does a virgin get HIV? through the blood. But the funny thing is her parents did not have HIV. She was a proven virgin. They went in there and checked. When the man of God began to ask her questions, she said, in my dream, my grandmother came and cursed me and said that my blood will be infected. Now she's going for marriage counseling and the first thing we ask for marriage counseling are those kind of blood things. And she found out that she had HIV. 
So you must understand that some sicknesses as, are as a result of curses, either that was placed upon you or your whole bloodline. And so when you're praying, you are, you are dealing with things. The Holy Spirit will begin to show you images, places. Some of you might even hear things. And you have to begin to renounce those things. Today we are praying that every evil, every evil power that is assigned to frustrate your health has to be destroyed. God must destroy it. 6 p.m. will deal with it as well. Want us to be on our feet. And begin to one, thank God. I think it's always important to begin thanking God again for revelation, for knowledge. Some of you have heard these things before, but you never took it seriously. Some of you have never heard it before. And so when God finally focuses your attention, I think it's reason to thank him. I want you to begin to lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Lift up your voice. Thank him right now. Thank him right now. Lift up your voice. In the name of Jesus, of Jesus, my father, my father, my father, my father, today, today, may your blood, may your blood deal. Deal. With anything, with, anything. with any power, with any power. Assigned, assigned against my health, against my health, against my health. Against my health. in this year, in this year. 2023. 2023. Today, Today. As, I pray, as I pray, every sign, every, sign. every, power. every power, every voice, every, voice. every, curse. every curse must come Let's go. to an end. To an end. To an end. As I begin to pray, begin to pray. Lord, Lord, deal with it. Deal with, deal with it. Deal with Come it. on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Where's the background music? Play. Lift up your voice. Any power that is a sign to frustrate your health this year. Any power. That is a sign to stop you from advancing the kingdom of God. Any power today, lift up your voice. Come on. 
sickness, that be sickness that wants to take me away that wants to take me away from God from God today, today I destroy you I destroy you, I destroy you, I destroy you by, you. The, power by the power of the blood by the blood of Jesus, of Jesus. come on pray we destroy every sickness by the revelation in the blood of Jesus we destroy it come on pray anything that will keep you away from the things of God anything that would keep you away from going to church from serving in church anything that will keep you away from reading your Bible ah, today we destroy it we destroy it You will stay in line with the things of God this year. You will stay in line with the things of God this year. This year you will be full of health. You will be full of health. We touch your blood with the blood of Jesus. You will be full of health. Every organ in your body shall be full of health. It will work optimally in the name of Jesus. We destroy you. We destroy you. You will not separate me from the things of God. I will read my Bible in peace. I will praise in peace. I will do worship in peace. Shine. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Today, any long-term diseases, anything that wants to terminally come and take you out by the cross. Today, 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 it must bow. Yes, Lord. It must bow. Yes, Lord. It must bow. Yes, Lord. We destroy it by the revelation of the blood. Yes, Lord. Listen, tomorrow really is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. If you keep that in mind, you will always serve God. It is not promised. And so us praying and pulling down divine health, you must take it seriously. There are some, some strange illnesses that come and hinder people and take them out. Take them out just like that. Working in hospice, one of the craziest things that I saw was a young lady who was literally my age with the same birth date as me. They said she was getting ready for her wedding and all of a sudden she got skin cancer. And as I was, I was putting her IV in her, her, I don't even know what to call him, the man who was, she was supposed to marry walked in with another girl and said, this is my fiance. And when I asked about the story, they said she was absolutely fine. 
Everything was fine. It's a white girl, same birthday as me, same year, getting married. And they said a strange something came on her skin. All of a sudden, skin cancer. Young girl. Today, any strange illness. Jesus. Jesus. We nullify it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say every power, every power that wants to terminate my life. That wants to terminate my I life. destroy you I destroy by you. the reason of the blood. By the I destroy you by the reason of the blood. I destroy you by the reason of the blood. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Pray. Your life will not be terminated by any sickness. In the name of Jesus, you will live healthy. You will live long. You will be full of health. What killed your parents will not kill you. Untimely death is not your portion. You will live a long, healthy life. The plagues of this world will not take you out. Your children will live a long, healthy life. They will not have untimely deaths. In the name of Jesus, of Jesus. say I cancel, I cancel every negative, every negative. Doctor's, report doctor's report over my life, over my life. that wants to enter that wants to enter in 2023. In 2023. May I hear good news, hey, good news. over my health. Over my health. For I believe, For I believe the, report the report of the Lord. Of the Lord. Today, Today I, declare I declare the report, the report of, the Lord of the Lord over my life, over my, life. Over my, organs. Over my organs. Today, Today I, declare I declare the health, the health of, the Lord. of the Lord. Come on, pray. Declare it. <laughs> Say my health. My health. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Be restored. Be restored. Back. Back. In Jesus' name. In Jesus Say name. my health. My health. Be restored. 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 May your health be restored. In the name of Jesus. As your body, your mind, your soul has heard the word of the Lord. 
May everything in you begin to bow to yes, Jesus. Lord. Yes, Lord. 2023, a good doctor's report. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. A good doctor's report. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. A good doctor's report. Yes, yes Lord. In the name of Jesus. 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 May the Lord heal you from every generational curse that has caused sickness. Yes, Lord. The known and the unknown sicknesses. The, the known and the unknown sicknesses. The asthmas, the diabetes, the autoimmune diseases, the period cramps. Every single thing must bow to the Lordship of Christ. Today we carry the revelation of Je Jeremiah 33, 6 that says that he will bring it to health and to healing. To health and to healing. We claim that 2023, it is a year of health. Yes, Lord. May we not be hindered by our health. Yes, Lord. May we not miss divine opportunities because of our health. Yes, Lord. When the doors, when the corridors of influence open up, may you not be hindered by your health. Yes, Lord. May you move with the speed of a child. Yes, Lord. May your joints move. May everything inside of you that is supposed to beat, beat in portion with the word of God. Yes, Lord. May the Lord take absolute control of your body. Yes, Lord. Those of you who need vision, 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 vision. He said he's restoring your vision. Yes, Lord. There will be testimonies of vision restoration yes, in this Lord house. Jesus. Not only does he want to restore your eyes spiritually, but physically, he wants to restore your eyes. But you must see the goodness of God. Today, we soak your whole body in the blood of Jesus. May your body carry the revelation of divine healing. May your, may your body carry the, the revelation of Jehovah Rapha. May you experience that dimension of Christ this year. And may the Lord give you the anointing that when you speak, healing occurs. Yes, Lord. When you speak, because you believe, the signs and wonders of healing shall be your portion. Yes, may you not just walk in divine health. But may you be a carrier of that anointing. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord said that some of you will encounter people who are sick. You will get phone calls and text messages from people saying that places of their body hurt. He said he has given you and endowed you with the boldness to declare and to banish every affliction. If you exercise your faith. He will increase that anointing. If you exercise your faith, he said, I will increase that anointing. And so today, if I were you, I would look for somebody, text somebody. If they say, my head is, ask them, are you okay? May the Lord begin to drop people. And those of you who are scared to pray for your spouse or, or, your, or your parents, may the Lord give you boldness today. Yes, Lord. There must be an increase. The world, if we must gain influence, it will be by signs and wonders. Amen. And no better sign, wonder, or miracle than the miracle of healing. May you carry that anointing in the name of Jesus. I want you to begin to thank God right now. For answered prayers. Thank you for 
you find help, God. You shall have a secret of the day. Let me thank you for this event. Of this fast. We have had the cup of us to cut up. But I will thank you for the life of our people. We thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father. We thank you. We thank you for this healing. We thank you for divine health. We thank you that this word is being enforced. We thank you, Abba Father, in Jesus' name. I want you to sow a seed of $52. If you have it, if you don't, it's fine. But if you have it, sow a seed. And I want you to say for 52 weeks this year, you are walking in divine health. Yes, Lord. For 52 weeks this year, if I'm not mistaken, that's the Lord, the number the Lord gave me. And I'm assuming there's 52 weeks in a year. It's his promise. And so if you have it, do as the Lord says. If not, the Lord knows your heart and you sow and you still attach. You attach this revelation with your seed. He sent his word. Giving you a second to do it so we can pray over it. Amen. Which it is sent. God's word in the name of Jesus is more powerful than cancer, heart disease, or any disease that you can name today. So let's put his word on our lips and let his healing. Abba Father, we thank you for every seed that has been offered and we connect it, O oh God, to canceling and destroying every negative report about our health that we were going to receive this year. Anything that was being conceived in the womb of the enemy, anything that the enemy had planned in the realms of the spirit, today by revelation of our prayers, we, we add this seed and we connect to the anointing of divine healing, divine health, which is our portion in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Abba Father, and we glorify your mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you all. See you at 6 p.m. sharp. And at um, the last three days, God willing, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, yes, it's our three-day weekend. It's going to be a good time. Friday starts at 7 p.m. That is our fire night. We'll be dealing with certain topics and a, a, a particular topic in general that I believe that the body of Christ, we need to pray against. And then on Saturday, high praises, high praises. Um, we must catch the revelation of high praise. And then Sunday, we crown it. And then we trust God that this year, as we have commanded our year, we would begin to see the manifestation of all our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.